Well, Christian Lawrence is a senior market strategist with Rabobank. He joins us now from New York. Thanks so much for speaking to us. I mean, this, this really is hitting, you know, depression era stuff. The U.S. spent a decade really trying to bounce back from the 2008 financial crisis. Can the U.S. government truly afford to fix this right now? Well, unfortunately, as you just said, a lot of people are losing their jobs. We are going to be looking at an unemployment rate in the US above 20%, which is really quite remarkable. Um, one thing I would say comparing this to previous rounds of unemployment is, of course, a lot of these jobs will come back as soon as the economy reopens. And we have started to see parts of the US reopen, whether it's Texas or Georgia. So the numbers are terrible. Most of those jobs, of course, will not come back online. But it is worth bearing in mind that some will as businesses do start to reopen. So temporarily, it's going to look very, very bad indeed. And it is likely that unemployment will be much higher than it it was before the COVID outbreak, but we're not going to stay at 20% for the, for the remainder of the year, that's for sure. Fair enough, but tell us, I mean, the government has already invested trillions of dollars in stimulus. A lot of people are complaining that it's not really working and more in unemployment claims are being filed. Can the government, can the US government continue to afford the kind, the, we're talking trillions of dollars still it will need to try to bring the economy back? Yes, unfortunately, even though the US has already spent a lot, as you mentioned, the CARES Act, over $2 trillion, more will be needed. And this isn't really stimulus. This is about trying to dampen uh, the, the downturn, trying to soften the landing, for want of a better way of putting it. Because otherwise, we'd have millions of people without a job and any source of income. We would have thousands of companies going bankrupt. And quite frankly, you'd end up with social unrest. So the government is, of course, doing a lot. Now, can it afford to? Well, the US is in a very privileged position because the US dollar is the reserve currency of the world. So certainly, uh, the U.S. can see its debt to GDP ratio increase quite substantially without it necessarily resulting in the currency selling off very dramatically, as it would in so many other countries that don't have a, a reserve currency. So the U.S. is a little bit privileged in that sense. It's a little bit privileged, but OK, we, we've put most of the focus on, on unemployment lately. We still have to remember that the United States also has uh, the highest level of consumer debt in the world, student loan debt, mortgage debt. What happens to all of that when the economy shrinks by 5%? Well, of course, that's the big concern. Household balance sheets have, have taken a big, big hit as a result of the COVID outbreak. And as you mentioned, we'd already seen consumer debt levels rise in, in recent years. Indeed, we had a debt crisis, of course, back in 2007 to 2009. And the solution to that debt crisis was more debt. So the world as a whole is far more leveraged than it's ever been. The US isn't a standout there. In fact, most of the developed world and a lot of emerging markets have seen their debt levels increase dramatically. But you're quite right. This is a big question going forward because debt is only going to increase further and yet growth is going to continue to slow. So the environment from a debt perspective is going to get worse without a shadow of a doubt. Amazing. Yeah. So the, the solution to debt is more debt. OK. <laughs> Christian, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.